Hey everyone, how's it going? In today's art lesson, we are going to be creating an Andy Warhol color square picture. Now, if you don't know who Andy Warhol is, he is a pop artist, and he is considered one of the most famous and influential pop artists, and probably one of the most famous artists of all time. Now, pop art is art that deals with images from the media, and could be like cartoons or famous people, things like that. There's also usually lots of bright colors and big, bold black lines around everything that really makes things stand out, or you could say even pop out. Now for this project, we're going to be making an Andy Warhol color square. So some of the materials you're going to need will be two pieces of paper this time. You need a pencil, and you don't want to use a mechanical pencil. You definitely want a normal wood pencil, an eraser, some permanent markers, a ruler, and then something to color with. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to take your first sheet of paper and we need to divide this up into four squares. Now my paper is going to be 12 inches long so I'm going to divide this in half and I'm just going to put a mark right at the six. And then I'm going to do the same thing up here. I'm just going to line this up and put a mark at the six. Now I'm going to line these marks up and we'll just draw a nice straight line down so that we have our paper in two halves. Now for the ends I'm going to line up my ruler and I'm going to make a mark at the four and a half because my paper is nine inches long so I'm going to put a mark at the four and a half and I'm going to put a mark at the four and a half up here and then I just want to line these up. So I'm going to line up both marks and draw a nice line that goes straight down. So now I have my paper in four different squares. Now my paper is going to be a little bit bigger than the paper you have at home. So the paper you have at home is probably going to be eight and a half by 11. So what I would recommend is when doing this on the long side of your paper, go ahead and mark it at the five and a half mark and the short end of your paper, just go ahead and mark it at about the four or maybe the four and a quarter mark, just to kind of help you get that eight and a half size. And if they're a little bit off, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, the next thing that I need to do is I need to take my second sheet of paper and I need to cut out a little rectangle that's about the size of one of these rectangles. Now, this rectangle is gonna be four and a half by six. So I can just go and make something that's about four inches by five inches or four by six or even four and a half by six. Just depends how big your rectangle is. So I've got a little sheet of paper cut out and this works best if you have something thin like printer paper. Now with this part right here, you definitely wanna make sure that you're using a wood pencil. And the first thing you wanna do is you wanna take this little piece of paper and you want to draw something on here. It can be whatever you want you can create anything that you want to on here. So I'm just going to go and I'm going to make a little burger. So I'm going to just draw my burger. I'm going to make the bun. Then I'm going to draw some wavy lines on here for lettuce. I'm gonna put a couple little triangle shapes on here for some cheese. I'll make kind of like a little wavy line for the burger, kind of bumpy. And then I'll draw another line that just goes down and up for the bottom bun. Now what I want to do is I want to take this little paper and I need to transfer this four times onto here so it looks the same. But right now it's not going to look the same because I would have to redraw it every time. So what I'm going to do is I need to flip this over and I need to cover the whole back of this in this graphite from my pencil. So I'm just going to take the side of my pencil and I'm just going to cover the whole thing in graphite. Now if you have pushed hard with your pencil when you drew, you should be able to see some of like the white lines coming out of this. But I'm just going to cover this whole thing.
Now, once you're done with that, you should have a nice kind of big scribble mess on the back. If you're not too sure if you covered it the whole way, I like to just kind of take my paper and I like to hold it up to a light or something just to see if I can actually see that my whole image is covered. So it's kind of hard with this angle of the camera, but I can definitely see when I kind of turn it that most of my image or all of it is covered by the shading. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this onto my paper. I like to kind of line it up by the corners in the middle. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold this down and I want to trace right on top of this. When you're doing this, you want to make sure that you're pushing down nice and dark and nice and hard so that you get a nice dark line. So push down really hard and this will help you get a nice dark line. So I'm going to go and just kind of retrace this whole image and try your best to stay on top of the lines. If you go off a little bit, it's totally fine. Nothing to worry about. And I'm just going to go right on here. And I think real quick, I'm going to add a little face onto my burger just to make it a little bit more fun. So we'll give him some eyes, give him some eyebrows, and we'll give him a really happy mouth. So look, you can kind of see, I'll hold it up a little bit closer, but you can kind of see that we have a nice little faint outline of the burger that I drew. And that's all because I put all that graphite on the back of here. Now, sometimes you have to go and you're gonna have to add a little bit more graphite as you move along here, just because it does start to come off a little bit. And you just wanna go and kind of keep reapplying this. Don't do it on top of your paper or else you're gonna transfer this image onto here in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna go right now and I'm going to transfer this image onto here four different times. Now, once you're done with that, you should have your image just very lightly transferred onto here four times. And you can see that this image, it's gonna be the same, it's gonna help line everything up. And by going right in the corners there, these things should be very, very closely lined up. Now, what I would recommend in this next step is to outline this, either in a pencil, dark, you know, pushing really hard with a pencil, or doing it with a pen, or I'm gonna use a permanent marker. Permanent markers will work the best in this situation. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trace each one of these images in my permanent marker. Now, once you're done with that, you should have your image drawn out all four times. Something you can also do is you could trace your, your little lines in the middle if you want to. You definitely don't have to, but it just kind of helps everything stand out a little bit and look nice and clean. And then what I like to do is once I'm done with this, I like to come in with my eraser and just go ahead and erase all those extra little pencil lines. And once you're done, you have a really cool picture that you have drawn out four different times, and it looks really cool. Now, the next step that we need to do is we need to begin coloring our picture. Now, when it comes to coloring these, we have a certain way that we need to do this. So, one of these pictures, just the image, not the background, I'm going to paint with primary colors. So red, yellow, blue. Another one of these, I'm going to use secondary colors, green, orange, purple. Another one, I'm gonna use tertiary colors. And those are the colors you get when you mix one primary, one secondary. So it could be like red, violet, blue, violet, red, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, green, or yellow, blue. 
And then the last one is a free one. You can paint it any way you want to, but just make sure that you use at least three colors in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm and I'm going to go ahead and start painting these. It doesn't have to be in any specific order. You can paint these however you want to or color them. So you can use some stuff like crayons, markers, colored pencils. I'm going to use these dry tempura paints to paint my picture. And if you are going to paint, you might want to use something such as like a mixing tray so you can mix all of your colors, especially your tertiary colors. Now, there's no specific order that they have to go. Just make sure you're using all your primary colors in one, all your secondary in another, at least three tertiary, and then at least three free colors. And we're only gonna paint the actual image. We're not gonna paint the backgrounds right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint these. Now, once you have painted all of your primary color one, your secondary color, your tertiary, and your free one, then you want to start painting the backgrounds. Now, the rule is for the backgrounds, you can paint them any color, but you don't want to use one of the three colors that you used inside your image. So, this is my primary color one, I used red, yellow, blue. So I need to use a color in the background that isn't red, yellow, blue. So I could use greens, or red violets, or whatever. Same thing in this one. I used green, orange, and purple, so I need to find a different color. I could use reds or yellows, things like that. In my tertiary color one, I don't want to use my yellow green, my yellow orange, my red orange, my blue, or my blue violet. And then in this one, I kind of want the realistic colors for my hamburger. So I don't want to use any uh, browns, kind of reddish colors like this, greens or yellows. So your next step is to go ahead and paint the entire background of these. And here you go, here is your, what your picture will look like when it is all done. You should have a primary color picture, a secondary color one, a tertiary, and a free one. You can do whatever you want. And then when you paint your backgrounds, just make sure that you use a different color that you didn't use in your picture. So there you go, there is your Andy Warhol color scale project. 
Thanks for watching, everybody.